today we welcome Dr. Katie Rainey. Katie is an expert in soybean genetics, and today she's going to talk to us about the history of the soybean and help us understand how high oleic soybeans compare with regular soybeans. Welcome, Katie. First of all, get us started and give us a little bit of history about the soybean. Sure. Uh, soybeans were first cultivated over 3,000 years ago in East Asia, and farmers began selecting different varieties of soybeans from the wild type. And then around 1700, they spread to Europe and uh, the North, North America. In the U.S., they started being cultivated around World War II on a wide scale, and crop scientists started um, selectively breeding them to improve their performance, including uh, improving the oil and protein uh, profiles. So the soybean seed is about 20% oil, which is very high, and that oil, that 20% oil is divided into different constituents that have different properties for health and performance in cooking. And then when you go to the uh, grocery store, vegetable oil is soybean oil. Okay, so when we see vegetable oil, we just should know that that is a soybean oil. Yeah. Great. So, so how is the high oleic soybean genetically different than a regular soybean? Okay, that's a great question. Um, all high oleic soybeans do have genetic differences from soybeans with a more typical oil profile. Um, so there are three sources, and th two of those sources are transgenic or GMO, and the third sort of type or source of high oleic soybeans is uh, through mutation. Uh, in native genes. The transgenic or GMO soybeans um, are produced using a technology known as RNA interference. And actually RNA interference is uh, present throughout all of life virtually and is part of even the innate immune response of humans. It's a genetic mechanism that uh, suppresses the action of viruses. And in this case, the scientists are using it to turn down the expression of the native genes. It's similar to um, dimming a light switch. Okay. And then the, the mutant uh, hyaluric soybeans just have a mutated native gene that is also reduced in expression, and so the, it alters the oil profile to be hyaluric. So is there any different from a farmer's perspective? When you look at the two different beans? Yeah, so any hyaluric soybean compared to a, um, to a, uh, to a soybean with a typical oil profile from the perspective of consumers would, um, or from the perspective of farmers would be about the same in terms of performance, though there's still some um, research going on to determine uh, exactly, you know, small differences in performance. And then for uh, consumers, uh, of course, the hyaluric has a healthier oil that uh, will be cheaper uh, once the acreage of, of hyaluric soybeans increases and, um, you know, cheaper and, and healthier. But, uh, you know, essentially uh, hyaluric and, and soybeans compared to regular soybeans are um, the same except for the, the one difference in oil profile. So are there any cons to creating this high oleic soybean? Um, currently, the only sort of negative is that the high oleic soybeans have to be identity preserved or kept separate in the market or value chain from regular soybeans. So that creates, you know, some expense, uh, but that's anticipated to go away as the acreage of high oleic soybeans incre uh, increases. Um, and then from the perspective of consumers, there really are no cons to the high oleic soybean. Um, and that's, it, for the transgenic or GMO versions of the high oleic soybean, that's partially due to the fact that there's a strict regulatory process of approval of that uh, genetic source to eliminate any potential problems before it reaches the market. So, um, you know, unless the consumer is concerned about the finer points of economics of the seed industry, then no, that I don't anticipate that there are any cons at all. It's, it's a benefit for, for health and, and uh, expense of, of, uh, so of vegetable oil. Great. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Um, we appreciate Katie giving us the background of the history of the soybean and helping us understand the genetic differences between high oleic soybeans and regular soybeans.